Alrighty, so this video is a companion video for the beginner modeling class that I teach in Second Life. I'm basically going to go over some user interface features and talk about some useful hotkeys. So let's get started. Now first I want to talk about the 3D view. This window here is the 3D view. Let's go ahead and close this sidebar for right now. So this is a 3D view. This bar down here is the header bar. Over here we have the properties window. And here's a text window. Um, usually most times you'll see um, the outliner up here. Okay, and this is what the outliner looks like. It's a hierarchy of the models and lights and such that you have in your scene. Okay. Now, let's say that you wanted to open another window. Let's say you wanted to open a UV window. So you go up to this little square, this little, not square, but this little triangle up here with the lines in it. Click it and hold down and drag and you have a new window. If we click this little cube, we can change this window into what we need. So let's say we want that UV image editor window. There we go. And you can resize it real. Now let's say I'm finished with this window. Now I can hit this little part in the corner again. I can also drag out another window, which I don't want to do. Sometimes hard to grab it. You see when you have this arrow now, when you drag, if I go this way, I'm going to close off the UV window. If I go this way, I'm going to close off the 3D view. But I'm going to go this way. So that's how you make and close a window. Okay, so let's talk about the sidebars in the 3D view. If you hit T, this brings up the tool shelf. This sidebar has options that go along with different tools that you pick. If we hit N, we get the transform sidebar, which has things about the display, background images, things like location, rotation, and scale. <coughs> Excuse me. So, let's also talk about something that will make it easier to move around in the viewport. Let's go to File, User Preferences, Rotate Around Selection, and also click zoom to mouse position. Both of these will help you zoom and rotate easier. Save as default. Then go and save user settings so that you don't have to do that again. Now I can rotate around the selection easily. I can also zoom easily. Okay. Also note that if you hit control up arrow, you can make any window go full screen. Hit control up arrow again to go back to the default way. Now let's talk about the hotkeys that you'll probably end up using the most, the 3D view viewport hotkeys. You can also reach these hotkeys by going to view and picking them from here but I should say you should you can reach those options there but really you want to learn these hotkeys if you don't learn anything else because just makes modeling go way faster if we know these hotkeys so let's start with the beginning we have front view which is numpad 1 back view is control numpad 1 Right view is numpad 3. 
Control numpad 3 gives you left view, top view is 7. Num um, control numpad 7 is bottom, camera view is 0, numpad 0. Now, let's say we wanted to rotate in increments. We can use numpad 4, 6, 8, and 2 to do that. So, rotate left, numpad 4. Rotate right, numpad 6. Rotate to the top, numpad 8. Rotate to the bottom, numpad 2. We can switch between orthographic and perspective view by hitting the 5 key on the numpad. There's perspective, there's orthographic view. We can hit you can use the numpad plus sign to zoom in, numpad minus sign to zoom out. Let's say I wanted to zoom into my selection, I hit numpad period. Let's say our 3D cursor is all off somewhere. This is your 3D cursor by the way. It's this little crosshair with the circle in it. And let's say we wanted to get this back into the middle of our scene. You can hit shift C. And if we wanted to center the view on that 3D cursor, we could go control numpad period. And period again to zoom in. Now let's talk about the 3D view movement with the mouse. Now, if we hold down the middle mouse button and drag around, we can rotate the viewport. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You can hold down shift and the middle mouse button and pan. Now let's talk some about transformations. Transformations include rotating, scaling, and translating, or e moving an object. There are a few ways to transform objects. There are a few ways to transform objects in Blender. We will focus on the hotkeys in the 3D manipulator widget. Here are the widget icons right here. Okay. Now, if you want to turn the widget off, just click this. This icon gives you the translate widget. You see that the arrows correspond to the axis. If you click here, this little curve, you get the rotation widget. And scale. I also want to note that you can cancel something in Blender by right clicking. So I'll cancel that. And went back to normal. Okay. Now let's say I wanted to have the translate widget and the scale widget active at the same time. So I have scale selected, and I'll just shift select the translate icon, and now I have both of them at the same time. You can do it with all three at the same time if you want. Okay. Now another way to transform is to use the hotkeys. R hotkey, rotate, S scale, G to move. Notice that if I right click, it cancels that movement. But if I want to keep this movement, I have to hit I have to left click or hit the enter button. Or hit the enter key, I should say. Okay. You can follow the hotkey with the axis that you want to constrain your movement to. You can also add a precise amount for the movement. So let's look at a couple of examples. 
say we want to rotate this cube on the x-axis 45 degrees. So we hit R. Then we get the axis that we want to constrain it to, x, then 45 degrees. Let's say we want to move this on the z-axis up to. So hit G, Z, then 2. Left click to confirm it. You can also do this with scale. Scale it up three times. S, three. Now it's three times as big. Note if you don't give an axis, it will use the viewport axis. For example, if you are in front view, the move and rotate hotkey will use the X and Z axis. However, the scale hotkey will use all three axes. Now, if you, you can also notice that you can use the tool shelf to control transformations. Now, say we want to constrain the scaling on the X and Z axis. So first, we right click this to select it, hit the S key to scale, but don't move it yet. Left click, and then you'll see the tool over here. So let's say we want to constrain it on the X and the Z. Then we can go over here. And as we scale, we're only scaling on the X and Z axis, not the Y axis. You can also put in specific numbers over here as well. That definitely can come in handy at times. Now selection modes. You need to go into edit mode. I tapped it from object mode to edit mode. I guess I should go over object and edit mode first. So these are the different modes that you can work in. Object mode basically works with the whole object, the whole model. Okay. Edit mode works with parts of the model, like the vertices or the edges or the faces. You can hit tab to go back and forth between these modes. Definitely a hotkey you want to memorize. All right. And object and edit mode are the ones you're going to use the most when editing. Now let's move on to this part here, which is the selection modes. So you have vertex, edge, and face. You can also change these by using the control tab hotkey. Vertex, edge. So really it's up to you which one you prefer to work with. And just as a closing for this, because it seems like it confuses people a lot, you right click to make a selection. Okay. Left click to move. Alright. And that's it for this video.